All right, so today we're gonna go over some exercises that can be really helpful for pelvic pain conditions. Um, also, if you're having any pain with urination, pooping, sex, um, a lot of times that's associated with um, elevated pelvic floor tone or some tightness. Um, and a lot of times that tightness is making up for something. So that's where some pelvic floor physical therapy could be helpful in, in figuring out what could be contributing to that root cause. But here are some things that you can kind of start at home um, to try to be helpful um, with that. So the first one being um, just some diaphragmatic breathing. So just as a reminder, the breathing diaphragm lives in the lower part of your rib cage and rests kind of like an upside down U. So when you take a deep breath in, your rib cage should be what's expanding as that breathing diaphragm comes down. And then your pelvic floor should work like a piston with that. So breath in should produce some lengthening and breath out should uh, produce kind of some recoil of the rib cage and of the pelvic floor as well. Um, a lot of people with diaphragmatic breathing breathe too much into their belly. Um, and so I'm gonna have you put your hands on your lower rib cage and you're gonna think about trying to expand your rib cage in all 360 degrees when you take a deep breath in. So you should feel ribs come forward, out to the side, and back down into the yoga mat or floor or bed, wherever you're doing this. So we're gonna do 10 breaths that way. In through your nose is helpful. Out through the mouth. Good, so hopefully you started to feel towards the end of that 10, some of that piston action with the breathing. If you found it really difficult to breathe into your rib cage without expanding your belly first, you could always put one hand on your belly, one hand on your rib cage and try to fill the rib cage before the belly expands too much. Um, there is gonna be some expansion here, but I do see a lot of people not expanding at all through the rib cage, and then all that's moving is the belly, which is just increasing uh, the pressure in the abdomen versus getting good diaphragm mobility and pelvic floor mobility. The next thing that we're gonna work on is a stretch called bound angle, okay? So feet are gonna come together, knees are gonna go apart. You're feeling a little bit of a stretch in the inner thigh muscles, okay? If this feels too intense without any support, you could always utilize pillows or yoga blocks or bolsters, uh, blankets, anything underneath the knees. I want it to feel like a gentle stretch, um, but not anything that's so intense that you feel like you have to guard and kind of activate those muscles to hold yourself into. And then you're gonna repeat that diaphragmatic breathing in this position and really kind of focus on trying to get that piston action to go. The reason that stretching these inner thighs is so um, important is because um, the inner thigh fascia is also linked to kind of the superficial pelvic floor. These guys hook into the pubic bone and then come down to the inside of the knee. Um, and so by stretching these, um, hopefully you're having an effect on some of that pelvic floor fascia um, and, and producing some mobility there. Um, so you would do, you know, again, 10 to 15 breaths in this position. Uh, the next position is happy baby. Um, so ideally you would be able to, to hold at your feet, but if that is a little bit too intense, you can kind of grab, you know, um, lower legs behind the knees. You could also 
put feet up like on a wall. Um, again, I want it to feel um, like a gentle stretch um, and you, you might feel kind of back of the thighs, glutes, hopefully a little bit of, um, of kind of tug in that pelvic floor area if you're struggling with tightness there. And again, you're going to perform like 10 to 15 of those diaphragmatic breaths in this position um, to kind of work on uh, getting some more mobility. Um, then we're gonna flip over to hands and knees. One of my favorites for addressing the attachment of the pelvic floor to the spine, because as a reminder, the pelvic floor attaches um, from pubic bone to tailbone and sit bone to sit bone. So it's kind of the entire bottom bowl um, of your pelvis um, and you know holds all those organs in um, and helps to, to manage bowel and bladder control. Um, but because it has attachments to the spine, um, these two moves are super, super helpful. Um, the first one being cat cow, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna inhale as you drop your belly look up towards the ceiling and tailbone up towards the ceiling. And then you're gonna exhale as you kind of round, pressing through your hands and tucking your tailbone under. And you're gonna go just kind of at the pace of your breath. Not necessarily feeling like you need to go super fast. You can always kind of do some shifting if that feels good too. Just remember that this is supposed to feel, you know, halfway decent in your body. Yeah, you're supposed to feel like you're working out some tension, but it's not supposed to be something that's contributing to, to more pain. And you would go, you know, 10 to 15 repetitions just at the, at the uh, pace of your breath with, with that one. Um, my next favorite is um, called uh, a thoracic rotation to, um, to a thread the needle. So what you're gonna do is you are going to um, inhale as you reach up for the ceiling with one hand, okay? And then you're gonna exhale as you bring that arm underneath the other one, rest your head, and reach that opposite hand up towards the top of the yoga mat. And you're gonna, um, you know, take a couple of deep breaths here. Should feel a little bit stretchy, um, maybe in kind of the side of the rib cage, side of the low back. And again, try to feel that piston action when you do that deep breathing. Feel that pelvic floor lengthening as you take that deep inhale in. And then when you're ready to get out of it, you're gonna bring this hand back down to press yourself back up. And then you'll repeat it on the other side. So you'll inhale, exhale, come under, rest, arm up, take a couple of breaths in this position. and then bring that top arm back down to press yourself up. Um, about five to 10 repetitions um, on each side should um, be sufficient with that. Um, the next one is going to be child's pose. So you can do kind of wide knees, feet together, or you can do narrow knees, feet together, um, whichever position feels better for your body. I tend to prefer knees out for, for my body position. You don't wanna feel pinching in the front of your hips. So if you're experiencing that, play with kind of that knees in versus knees out. And then you could also, you know, utilize a pillow or some blankets underneath um, your thighs here just to decrease the intensity of the angle that your hips are coming into that flexion. But you're gonna sit those glutes back towards your heels. You're gonna reach arms forward, rest your head, and work on that, um, that piston breathing again. Um, now, if it feels too intense having your arms up, you can always bring them down and rest your forehead on your hands. Just decreases the lever length um, and is a little bit gentler on, on that mid-back area and shoulders. Um, but um, objective is the same, doing some of that diaphragmatic piston breathing, trying to gain some length in the pelvic floor. Again, you can kind of shift around um, if you feel that that is good. Um, in your body. Okay, and then the last one, you're going to start on your belly, and this is called Sphinx Pose or um, Prone on Elbows for all my PT folks. Um, so what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of come up and rest on your elbows as your hips stay in contact with the ground. Um, 
This might feel a little bit stiff or achy kind of in that low back area. So feel free to kind of modify um, the range of motion as you need to for your body. Um, but the goal is, um, again, to kind of work on that piston breathing. Um, we don't very commonly move into this type of position um, in our daily life, especially those of us that are doing a lot of sitting or working on computers, texting, everything is super, super forward. So this is kind of bringing that spine into the opposite direction. For a little bit more of an intense stretch, you can inhale as you look up towards the ceiling. You might feel a little bit more of an aggressive stretch kind of from pubic bone up the front of your body towards your chin. And then as you exhale, you'll bring, bring yourself back down. Inhale as you look up and exhale as you bring it back down. And again, you know, I would stay here for, for 10 to 15 breaths. Um, same thing with that child's pose. Um, and again, if you feel like you can't tolerate, you know, 10 to 15 breaths in any of those positions, or you can't tolerate five to eight repetitions, um, during the thoracic rotation one, do whatever feels good in your body. Also, if it feels like this one move has been super, super helpful, feel free to stay there more. I don't think that these are types of exercises that you can do too much of. So I would prioritize these at least once a day. Um, if you feel like pelvic floor tension is contributing to some of your symptoms, and then if you feel like it's helpful and you can fit it in a second time, great. Um, and then once you feel like you've gained some length, um, you know, I'd keep up on it at least, you know, three to four times a week, um, just prioritizing to, to keep some mobility in those tissues. So hopefully this is super helpful. Reach out to a pelvic floor PT um, if this has helped a little bit or hasn't helped at all and you're still having any pain with peeing, pooping, sex, physical activity. We're here to help. Hope you have a great day.